Hi everybody and welcome back to The Upper Room. This week we're talking about which Bible holds the most truth. In order for you to know which Bible holds the most truth, you first have to know about someone named Martin Luther. Martin Luther studied law and was involved in an accident. After the accident, he had a greater value of life and he decided to become an Augustinian monk. And when sent to Rome to receive his orders from the Vatican, he discovered many things that were not very holy, like prostitution and lots of different things that were um, happening outside and around the church and uh, even some of the higher up officials um, selling indulgences to the people for forgiveness of sins. Martin Luther didn't like this at all, which he had every right not to. Martin Luther taught something called sola fide, which basically means by faith alone we are saved, not by any works, not by any of the sacraments of the church, and not by the help of any priest or going to any confession. So on October 31st, 1517, he nailed his thesis to the church door um, against indulgences, 95 rebuttals on indulgence. Martin Luther basically single-handedly stood up against the against the church. He taught all of his followers that only through faith and not by works can we be saved, which doesn't really make any sense because once you become the elect, now you are assimilated into the body of Christ and now you should do everything to help others in the name of Jesus, which would be a good work. Martin Luther also argued that the priests and their rituals could not help save souls at all. Martin Luther also uh, claimed that the church in all its powers and all its officers had absolutely no spiritual powers whatsoever and couldn't help souls. Even though Christ started the Catholic Church by sending the 12 out to build the church with the help of St. Peter and the church that they built was the Catholic Church and all its sacraments. Martin Luther even went to go as far as to claim that the priesthood was a human invention which isn't true at all because uh, Jesus came to fulfill the old law and in the old law the God appointed priests through Moses's brother Aaron and Jesus continued this t tradition with his 12 and his priests as well. there were many radical friars that tried to attack the church and some of the things that that they were doing what made Martin Luther so different well the time the time era that Martin Luther attacked the church had just invented a new invention called the printing press and no other friar before had access to this type of technology. Martin Luther printed signs, flyers, made lots of literature, all kinds of things and he sent them everywhere. Finally, the Catholic Church excommunicated Martin Luther, disregarding any of his beliefs. They even ordered for his arrest. Martin Luther was okay with being excommunicated because he didn't believe that the priests had any, any spiritual powers or the church had any authority over somebody having salvation. Some of Martin Luther's followers took him and hid him in a tower in Germany where the authorities couldn't find him. There, Martin Luther stayed with the help of some other people and he translated the first Latin Bible into German. In those days, the only language that the Bible was translated into was Greek and Latin. And unless you spoke Greek and Latin, you couldn't you couldn't read the Bible and it had to be interpreted to you by a priest. It wasn't until Martin Luther translated the Bible into German and gave it to his subjects that others were able to interpret it from themselves for themselves. The problem with this was is that many people interpreted it in such a radical way that they went off and started their own religions which is now why we have about 41,000 different denominations of Christianity today instead of one, the Catholic Church. All because of one man. Now that you know who Martin Luther is and what he stood for, let's talk about why Catholics have a thicker Bible and Protestants have a smaller Bible. Protestants have 39 books in the Old Testament, whereas Catholics have 46. Why? In the first century, the standard translation of Jewish scripture was the Greek translation of these scriptures. Since the Jews at this time mostly spoke Greek, the Greek version of these scriptures for both Jews and Christians included 46 books of the Old Testament. The writers of the New Testament all quoted from the Greek version of the Old Testament. Then in 70 AD, the, Jew the Jewish temple is Jerusalem was destroyed. The Jews were scattered and Judaism was changing. 
Many Jews were becoming convinced of Christianity, seeing the fulfillment of the promises written in the Old Testament in Jesus Christ. The Pharisees were becoming concerned about preserving Jewish identity. A new translation of the Jewish scriptures was made and the Greek version then became rejected by Jews. The new Jewish translation removed seven books. This helped to produce a final distinction between Judaism and Christianity. The new Jewish Christians kept, kept all the books of the original Greek translation and also began to decide upon a canon for the New Testament. In the year 30, 397 AD, the Christian Council of, of Carthage declared with the, with the Pope's approval the canon of the Christian Bible. The first official declaration of the Christian canon of Scripture included the seven books which had been rejected by the Jews. The Christian Bible form that points that point forward had an official canon of 46 Old Testament books and 27 New Testament books. Then in the 16th century, Martin Luther began the Protestant Reformation. Martin Luther sought to reform Christianity and also the Bible. He proposed their removal of 11 books from the biblical canon. These were Hebrews, James, Jude, Revelations, and the seven Old Testament books which had been removed by the Jews centuries before, largely because these books support works and they also support the help of the saints. Others disagreed and Luther succeeded only in removing the seven Old Testament books and the Protestant canon was born. But let's hear what Martin Luther thought about these books in his own words. The epistle of St. James is an epistle of straw, Martin Luther. Then I shall make rubble of it. I almost feel like throwing Jimmy into the stove, Martin Luther. It need not surprise one to find here in Hebrews bits of wood, hay, and straw, Martin Luther. I am so great an enemy of the second book of, Ma of the Maccabees and to Esther that I wish they had not come to us at all. For they have too many heathen unnaturalities. Unnatur Martin Luther. The book of Esther I toss into the Elbe. I am such an enemy to the book of Esther that I wish it did not exist, for it Judaizes, Judaizes too much. In 1546, the Catholic Church condemned Luther's canon in the Council of Trent. The church declared the biblical canon to be closed with all 46 Old Testament books and all 27 New Testament books. Protestants moved forward, having saved all 27 New Testament books, but only 39 of the Old. The Protestant Bible is, is also missing the end of Esther and parts of Daniel and Jeremiah, and Jeremiah all because of Martin Luther, all because of his opinion and the Council of Trent was a board of over 50 men who all agreed together to keep the Bible the way that it was and not to feed into some madman's fantasy. That is why the Catholic Bible is thicker than the rest because we kept all the original books from Judaism. Even the Jews don't have all the books that we do. And we kept all of the books of the New Testament. Our Bible is thicker because it goes back further. It has all the truth in it. The Catholic Bible is the Bible that you should read, not a Bible that has been pieced apart and ripped apart because of the opinions of a madman going against God's church. So thanks again for watching The Upper Room. I'm Jared. I look forward to seeing you next week. Happy holidays and pick up a copy of my book. Thanks.